Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what we're going to go over is a perennial favourite, definitely one of mine, that I've been painting for a very long time. <laughs> and that is a member of the Astra Militarum, an Imperial Guardsman. Now these guys I've been collecting for 20 years. <laughs> Which is, you know, kind of embarrassing on the face of it, but... You know, I love these guys. They are one of the coolest things in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, if you ask me. These are the guys who face the myriad horrors of the universe with nothing but a las gun, a bayonet, and their guts behind it. So I think they're kind of nuts. They're cool. Now, my current guard army I've had in some form or other since... Well, they're about 12 years old now. I started those with a Medusa 5 campaign. So pretty practiced at this, uh, <laughs> this particular technique. But, luckily, it's super simple. So it's one that I want to show you guys. If you're looking to get some new guys on the table, or you want to get some cool allies along for your 40k armies. Now we'll start off, I've given him a quick spray with some Xandri Dust, a Citadel spray can first of all for that, and then a little bit of Xandri Dust just to make sure that that's a nice smooth finish over the whole model. I'm then going to dry brush him, quite liberally, with Tyrant's Skull. Now this is a little bit yellow, but you'll see how this tones down a bit once we've gone and put the wash over the top of it. We'll block in his armor with Castellan Green. Then we're going to go straight to Cadian Flesh Tone for his skin. Now it might seem like we're skipping a step by not going to Bugman's Glow and then highlighting up from that, but this is about a, a speedy, you know, real quick way of getting these guys on the table. And you'll find that actually doing a couple of thin coats of Cadian Flesh Tone will save you time versus working up from uh, Bugman's Glow. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to go, all of his uh, equipment, I like to do brown. Now, if you're painting it like it is on the box, it's black, and you know you can use any old black you fancy for that. But I like the slight warmth that uh, leather equipment adds to these guardsmen. So I'm going to do mine with leather brown. This is from Vallejo. Uh, dryad bark is a good replacement for this if you're using strictly Citadel paint, so that's what you've got. Then I'm going to do his boots and into black details, funnily enough, in black. Um, I'm going to use, again, Vallejo's, just because I like the coverage. There are a couple of white details on his helmet and his, uh, and his chest eagle, just there. We're going to do those with Celestra Grey, and then the whole model gets a wash with our good friend Agrax Earthshade. Now just while I'm getting my Tyrant Skull into my brush, so we're going to dry brush this, get some on the end here, and work it into the bristles. Now, I like using uh, paper towel for this rather than toilet paper because it lets you get pretty rough with it. But I just want to mention, if anybody gives you static for painting your toy soldiers like they are on the box, you know, you want to paint KDN8 or you want to paint Ultramarines or something like that, and somebody's giving you, you know, noise over that, pfft, forget that. You know, painting them like they are on the box is a great way to get started because it's so well documented. You know, you've got plenty of reference and frankly, the, the support out there, I mean, like videos like this, for example, you'll find all over YouTube. Um, just go for it, man. It, it lets you practice, it lets you have some fun, and it gets some toys on the table. Like I said, anybody giving you noise for, uh, for painting your models the way you like? These are fantasy figures, man. Just, just do it the way you like. <laughs> so, I've got my Tyrant Skull. And now, same as always, I want to be quite light with putting this on. I'll just put the light on on my... Ooh, that's bright. Okay, but that helps. So what I'm going to do, same as always with dry brushing, you want to be quite gentle at first. You see I'm only really getting a little bit of it there. Because we can always add more with a dry brush. But taking it off isn't going to work. So what you're looking to do here is to catch the edges and all of the high points of the fabric of this uniform while leaving some of the shading intact. Now, with Xandri Dust being quite a bright color, this might not be immediately obvious as you're putting on Tyrant's Skull, but hold the faith, and you can be quite generous with this. Like, at first, take your time and build it up. But as you start seeing how it's gonna come off your brush, you can get a little bit more uh, aggressive with it. <laughs> and then, just go around all of the uniform, and if by some fluke you happen to get a skin or what have you in this process, Eh, all the better, because that's going to actually help us out with some of our highlighting later. So I'm going to quickly whiz round. I'm going to dry brush all of his uniform how I want it to look. 
You'll see that dry brush is quite generous. I've deliberately sort of come back over and done it a second time in most of these places so we get a nice pronounced effect. That's really going to help us out when we put that wash on to give us that shading and highlighting effect really quickly. So what comes next is the old Castellan Green. We're going to paint his armor in. And this is just a case of going around a little bit of water in your paint and just blocking in all of these colors. Now if there's any stage during all of this that's going to take the longest, it will probably be that Castellan Green. You'll likely need to go over for a couple of coats just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. But it's definitely worth it. So next we're going to jam on this uh, Cadian Flesh Tone. And you can see I've got it sort of yeah, normal sort of consistency I water it down to. And let's just start by bucketing this on all of his skin. Now likewise, you'll probably need a couple of thin coats of this. You know, just to make sure... Ooh, jeez, that's bright. <laughs> just to make sure that this covers properly. But, uh, you know, take your time, go around, and just make sure all of that skin is a nice, even colour. Now don't tell anybody, but I managed to get that skin on in one coat. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you luck out. Now we're just going to go around all of the, the webbing, sort of his pouches, his materials, his belts, that sort of stuff. And we're going to do that in that leather brown. As I say though, you can do this in black if you so fancy. But either way, now get onto your webbing. And if you were going to do this in black, you could do the boots and everything at the same time. After all those brown details are done, you can see on the pouches and everything at the back there how much of a difference that makes. What I'm going to do now is do anything that's going to be black. So let's get to his boots. Now you could do his hair black at the same time, for example, if you were going to do it that way. But I did it brown because I like a little bit of variety. So we've got all those black details done and out of the way now. They're looking pretty good. I particularly recommend if you're going to do uh, Cadians that any pistol grips on las guns, stuff like that, just do those in black. It adds a little bit to the model, you know, tidies it up quite nicely, and it means you don't have to worry too much about what is the correct color. Black helps you hide a lot of sins. I've also done the uh, handle to his bayonet, and just along the little sort of mic pickup for his face there, saves me doing the whole thing metal. Now I'd forgotten, actually, we do have to do some metal. <laughs> so any metal details now, I'm going to go over with Lead Belcher. And same as with your Castellan Green, you might need to do a couple of thin coats of this. But, as always, all you need, a little bit on your palette, whatever you're using, and then just a smidgen of water. And you can sort of come into the side of that. There we go, that'll do me fine. So, let's get cracking on these metal bits. As soon as I figure out how I can hold my hand still, jeez. Part of the reason I'm using this uh, paint handle is the fact I've got kind of cack hands. So this is actually a really nice thing to have handy for me. No pun intended that time. <laughs> and let's just get around, get my lead belcher on all of these metal details. So now that we're almost done with our base coats, it's just time to put on that Celestra Grey. Anywhere that we're going to have white eagles or what have you later on. Now as well, if you're doing a sergeant like I am in this case, you can do his stripes on his sleeve in the same time now. Don't worry if you're not getting them individually, because those gaps between them we're going to shade over and that'll be fine. So, let's quickly nick brown and any of those uh, bits that are going to be white, Celestra Grey, pop them on now. Now with all of those base colors applied, he's ready for a wash. But I just wanted to quickly point out, one of the bonuses to using an ordinary color straight out of the pot, with a little water of course, to do your base coats, is that they're very easy to tidy up. When I was painting the metallics on for the uh, for the gun and what have you, I managed to smudge a little onto his shoulder pad, but you'll see I've just very quickly tidied it up with some Castellan Green. Same too for any of the colors you're using. Try and stick to stuff that's easy to reach, and uh, you, know, you can use straight from the pot. You don't have to mix your base coats. So with that in mind, we're now ready to give him his wash. So Agrax Earthshade, very, very carefully, and just go around your model, make sure that you are getting this into all of the recesses, so really work it in. Anywhere that it starts to pull too much, or if it looks like it's going to pull a lot, just draw it away with your brush. And you can keep moving that wash while it's wet. So you want to do this whole model in the same stuff, around the back and all that sort of carry on. And then give them probably about half an hour to 40 minutes to dry. And then we're going to get on, we're going to do some highlights 
finish them off. Now once that wash is dried, this is what we're left with. And I very quickly bashed a base on there to show you that once it's in context, I mean that's finished. <laughs> I'd quite happily put that on the table as part of my army. The real kicker to this is that base coat, dry brush, and then the wash on the fatigues. Everything else is just washed and shaded, there's no highlighting anywhere else, but because this, uh, this clothing forms such a large part of the guardsman, you know, it's what makes him look done. And I mean, you know, look at what a difference it makes. Those colours that we put on were just flat, blocky stuff, but with that dry brush included, it really helps it make it pop. So that would be where I'd finish painting an ordinary guardsman. But if you're anything like me, you like to do your sergeants, your lieutenants, and all that sort of stuff a little bit higher up. So what I'll show you now is something that'll work quite well on your ordinary guardsmen if you all want to paint them to a real nice standard. But we're going to go ahead and do it on this sergeant here because I think it'll help demonstrate some even simpler ways to really make him stand out. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to do a little bit more to his skin. And we'll start off with a shade of Reichlin Flesh Shade just to deepen it down a bit and that'll help contrast with this Kislev flesh we're going to highlight with. Then we're going to do an edge highlight of Lauren Forest on all his armor and his weaponry. We'll do the metal with an edge of Runefang Steel, and then just touch up all of those white details with the white scar. So nothing too complicated from this point. As you see, it's a very narrow set of colors. We're not going to bother highlighting his boots because why? <laughs> but let's get started. We're going to put some wash on his face and his hands. Now, as you can see, the wash, the Agar's Earthshade, has settled quite nicely. But we'll just add a little bit more depth with some of this Reichlin Flesh Shade. It has a slightly redder tone to it, but that'll help us when we come time to do the, uh, what do you call it, the Kislev Flesh for the highlight. Now, while that wash on his skin is drying, we'll get a little bit of Lauren Forest, and we'll go around and do the edges of all of his armor plates. So, if I get in real close here, you see, I've got some on my brush, and instead of using the very tip, I'm going to use just the, near the edge of the brush. And use that as an easier way of getting this edge highlight on. So you can go around now, put on as much of this as you like. I recommend you do the whole, you know, all of these armor plates. But just bash some of this on to introduce a lot more depth. Now with that Lauren Forest applied, you can see how much extra depth we get to that model. You know, that's really easy to put on. A little bit more time consuming than just dry brushing a surface, but look how easy that is and how much smarter it looks. You know, really brings that color up, riches that green, sorry, enriches that green rather. But what we're going to do now is since we've taken the time to let that wash dry on his face, we can do the same thing to his skin. So let's get in close here. What I'm going to do with my Kislev Flesh is just do along his brow, his nose, let's do his chin, and you can go, you know, as much as you like with this. I'm going to do along his cheekbones, sort of an inverted L shape to follow some of his face there, and then just the other brow. Follow down a little bit there too. As I say, you can get quite creative with this, you can really go wild with the uh, highlights on a face. But all we're going to do is just those little bits to make them pop a bit, and then we'll just do the back of his knuckles and such too. We'll then give all of the metallic details the same treatment with that Runefang steel. And then we'll finish off the white scar on all of those little white details. Now as well here, if you're really careful, get in there and you can paint his teeth at the same time. That's enough. <laughs> right. And then there we have it. That's our guardsman done. So you see, from that basic sort of quick way of doing things, it doesn't take very much to really bring him up a little bit higher. Just a few extra colors. A little bit of patience, really, making sure you've got those highlights on, and you can really make them pop. As I said, you don't have to do this to your whole force, but it will look pretty cool if you do. Otherwise, just concentrate on things like your squad leaders, your officers, and that sort of thing, and it'll really make a difference. You'll be bashing out squads for your Astra Militarum army in no time at all. 
So the key to this is making sure that those base coats are all nice and solid before you put your washes on. And on top of that, think about stuff that'll give you a nice high contrast when you're dry brushing over your base coat for the clothes. That's really the, the sort of the crux of how the speed painting techniques work. As ever guys, you can get in touch with me really easily. Just drop a comment in the box below, or you can get in touch with me on my Facebook or Twitter. Those are linked down there too. So thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.